Hey guys, welcome to my first look video on BMW's brand new X2, or in this specific case, the iX2. I'm out here in Melbourne, Australia. It just so happened that they were doing their studio media launches over here on this car, and Nick invited me down and said that I could shoot some content around it. Unlike many new cars or models that are released these days, this is an all new model. It's not simply an LCI or a facelift. And I'm sure you'll agree to look at at least, it looks completely different to the previous generation X2. This particular press car is fire red metallic. I'd not seen that color until I walked into the studio about 20 minutes ago. And it's completely different in real life to what I've seen in pictures and other videos online. So I'm guessing my camera probably isn't giving a true representation it reminds me very much of Aventurine Red, which is one of my favorite BMW colors. At time of launch in Australia, there will be one version of the iX2 available, which is this one, it's the X-Drive 30. Later on next year in 2024, they'll also release the E-Drive 20, which will sit below this. In terms of pricing, well, this is where it gets really interesting. You see, historically, premium manufacturers like BMW would cost you a fair amount more in Australia due to things like luxury car tax. In the past, you'd sometimes pay 50, 60, 70% more than we would back home in the UK. In England, an iX2 X-Drive 30 like this will set you back 56 and a half thousand pounds. On today's exchange rate, that would work out at $109,000. Except here in Australia, BMW priced this at $85,700. That's $23,000, if we're using today's exchange rate again, cheaper than it would be in the UK, which is massively impressive. And the reason that it is that much cheaper is over here, they have a luxury car tax threshold at $90,000. And BMW Australia have actually managed to now squeeze in six models that sit below that price point. As you know, electric cars don't massively excite me as a fully blown petrol head. But what I do like is smaller electric cars because they make a lot more sense to me, especially in and around cities. And although when you compare this to the original X3 it actually has an identical size footprint, when you compare it to other EVs on sale today, like BMW's very own iX, or the hybrid that I came down here in, the XM, it is relatively small. Hidden down there on the floor is a 65 kilowatt hour battery, and that gives this X-Drive 30 a claimed range of up to 449 kilometers, although I believe that quote, or that claim, is on the standard 19 inch wheels, whereas this one has the optional 20 inch wheels, which knock off a few kilometers from that range. And if you need a little bit more range, well, then you go for the incoming E-Drive 20, that gives you about 480 kilometers. It has the same size battery, and the reason it gives you more range is because this being X-Drive, well, it has a motor on the front axle, and it has a motor on the rear axle, whereas the E-Drive 20 just has a motor on the front axle. The iX2 will charge at speeds up to 130 kilowatts. In terms of power and performance, this flagship X-Drive 30 model produces 230 kilowatts and almost 500 newton meters of torque. That gives it a claimed naught to 100 kilometers per hour. That's 62 miles an hour for UK viewers time of just 5.6 seconds. Now in terms of styling, I have to say this isn't really my cup of tea if I'm being totally honest, but it does look much better in the flesh than in pictures and other videos that I've seen. And I think that's the case with many modern BMWs and in fact, many modern cars from all manufacturers. They take a while to get your head around because a lot of the styling is quite radical compared to what we're used to. But the original X2, again, in my opinion, wasn't exactly a beautiful car. If it was my money though, I still prefer the new or current 
X1 and iX1. I think that is a really good looking piece of kit and it has been on our roads for a while now and I've seen quite a few and it's definitely growing more and more on me. I'm not sure that this will, but then I've never been a fan of the SUV coupe from BMW. Cars like the X6 that have been around for what, 15 odd years now, the smaller X4, and now this X2. I prefer the odd numbers, the one, the three, the five, and even the seven. But starting around the front end, well, we have standard adaptive LED lights, which I think BMW now call Matrix, like many others. Um, but we've got lots going on down here, these new grills, which are unique to the X2 compared to the X1. Uh, these are illuminated as well, just like the ones on the flagship XM that I'm driving around in. As you walk along the side of the car, well, it is very square, and that is, once again, unmistakably modern BMW, especially their SUV styling. This one, as we talked about a bit earlier, is on the optional 20 inch wheels, but it comes standard on 19s. And when you get around the back of the car, well, you've got these big shoulder lines below the C pillar, um, which once again, you don't really see in pictures, uh, but they are quite prominent. But to me, that looks very similar to the current X4 or the current X6. This press car has the optional pan roof. I say pan roof because it's actually just a glass panel. It doesn't open, um, which is something that they've sort of decided to do with this smaller segment X car. That is a disc brake. And that is something that you won't find in cars like Volkswagen's ID3 or Audi's Q4. We shouldn't be using drum brakes like Audi and Volkswagen do on modern cars, especially modern cars that weigh two plus tons. And I know that there's a lot of regeneration going on when you do brake and slow down these cars. But at the end of the day, if you need your brakes, you need your brakes and disc brakes are the way to go. Look at the size of the ones in the front, massive. And heading around to the back of the car, which is where the main changes are on the X2 compared to the X1. Well, yeah, I'm just not a fan of coupe SUVs in general. I think the only coupe SUV that I quite like is Porsche's KN Turbo GT. And that probably is because of what's underneath its skin as opposed to the way it looks. But ironically, this has a bigger boot compared to the iX1. I think it's 15 litres bigger at 525 litres is the rear reversing camera. And that is to clean the camera because obviously being quite exposed, a lot of the grime will go up there. So it's handy having that. Let's open the boot using the BMW badge. Obviously, it's a remote boot, so I could open it with the key as well. And being a coupe style SUV, well actually if you fold those rear seats down, it's very useful for things like bicycles, golf clubs. In fact, golf clubs would fit in here quite nicely, I'm sure, without folding the seats down. And because we're in Australia, surfboards. Quick look under here, hopefully there's enough light. You can see there's storage for things like charging cables because these are heavy and they do take up a lot of space. So it's good to see that you still have all of the available boot space, but you stash the charging cables down in there. Let's jump inside and see what's going on in the interior. Jumping inside, first thing to talk about is the standard equipment list, at least for the iX2 xDrive 30 out here in Australia. You get things like the adaptive LED headlamps, which we talked about. You get adaptive M suspension. You know how much I think that particular option is really important on models that don't come with it. Comes with 19 inch alloys, as we talked about. Comfort access with digital key. So essentially your phone becomes the key. Driving assistant professional. So that's the, uh, partly autonomous feature that you have on many modern BMWs. 
it's very, very handy as I'm discovering, finding out in the XM in Melbourne traffic. Electric seats in the front and head up display. There's a number of other standard fit options, but they're the ones that I plucked out because I think they're really, really impressive. Optional extras are things like the 20 inch wheels that this has got, the pan roof, which does come with a blind, but it doesn't open and Harman Kardon sound system, which this particular car once again does have. And I have to say that the speaker panels on the doors look really good and I'm sure make the interior feel a little bit more premium. Thankfully, BMW have decided to ditch the subscription services around heated seats and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, because that did kick off a storm and I think they'd almost been forced into <laughs> pulling that back and deciding it wasn't a great idea. But it wouldn't surprise me if it does come back later on in the next, let's say, 10, 15 years, because everything we do and use today is based around subscription services, financing, etc. So let's see. But for now, they have been ditched. But in terms of Driving positions, well, it feels fantastic in here. It feels like I'm in a BMW. If I close my eyes, I could be in my M3 Touring, which is really important because obviously this is a totally different car, totally different chassis setup. But the fact that they get the ergonomics right across the range is very important. Just little things like when I've got the wheel here and I'm in a relaxed driving position, I'm cruising along the highway, my elbows are resting nicely on this center console and on the door card. So many other manufacturers out there, including some of the other Germans, seem to get ergonomics completely wrong. But this, I'm glad to report, is spot on. It also features BMW's curved display, which is a slightly reduced version of the ones that we get in the bigger models. So cars like my M3 Touring or the XM that I've got parked out there. I first saw this in, the X1 M35i. I think that was the first car that BMW launched with the iDrive 9. There is no iDrive controller down here though, which is a bit of a pity. You've got a few buttons and volume controls, etc. Um, and that's your drive select. BMW have essentially simplified some of the features on this curved display. So getting to things like the heated seats or various apps is a lot easier and there's more shortcuts available than the previous version and to look at aesthetically well it sits in here really nicely i think the dashboard display etc looks really good all the materials and the touch points are lovely these seats are very comfortable reasonably supportive and like a two-tone um, almost white and grey colour. I've forgotten the technical names of, of these uh, colours. And I've also forgotten the technical term of the non-leather that they're made out of. It's something vegan-y, but I can't quite remember. Um, but essentially, they're not leather. They feel like leather. They look like leather. Are they going to deal with sweat and hotter conditions like leather? Probably not quite as well. But as I say, if you didn't know that these weren't leather, you assume that they were because they touch and feel really nice. The last thing to talk about is the use of space and the practicalities of the iX2. When the X1 came out, which has got a very similar cabin, I remember thinking they have used the space so well. It's almost like the TARDIS in the sense that you get in there and everything opens up, especially this particular press car with the glass roof. There's just light coming in from everywhere and there's big storage bins and doors. We've got loads of storage down here because we've got like a floating console, two big drink holders. We've got a wireless charging bay there. Uh, we've got some vents and USB-C ports for the rear seat passengers as well. And they've got plenty of space back there. You do get slightly less headroom in the iX2 or the X2 compared to the X1 and the iX1 because of the sloping roof line. Um, but I'm only talking about an inch or two. And if your rear seat passengers are under six foot one, then they won't have an issue. If they're my sort of height, then you are gonna um, hit your head on the roof. But talking of that in the front, well, I've absolutely got no issues up here. I could even wear a helmet if I wanted to. I think I've covered 
as much as I can in the time that I've got this car. Hopefully I'll get my hands on one back home in the UK on the road and try it out in real life scenarios and situations. But the bottom line is, aside from the styling, which as I've talked about, isn't my cup of tea, in terms of the package and the car that you get, it's really nice. And out here in Australia for $85,000, it seems to be very, very good value. So if you're looking for a reasonably sized family SUV that is electric and you live in Australia, I'll definitely urge you to at least head down to your local showroom and sit in one, have a play around in one, have a look at one, and then ask to take one out for a test drive because, yeah, in terms of packaging, space, fit and finish, quality, infotainment, I mean, there's nothing else on the market as far as I'm concerned that compares to BMW's iDrive system, even when you do remove the iDrive controller and it integrates well with your iPhone or your Android. Anyway, I'm gonna finish the video here. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this first look walk around video on BMW's new uh, iX2. I'll see you at another video very, very soon. Cheers.